Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And if you're watching this when it's coming out, it's like April and you might have, you know, gotten past Christmas now and you're like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, we tore down our show last week. Um, <laughs> Maybe you tore down in January, maybe you tore it down last week. Um, and now you're ready to think about next year, or more importantly, uh, more or more pointedly, if you're new to this hobby of Christmas lighting, you might be starting to get into things and go, okay, how in the world do I go from having a layout that I've built here in X Lights? that I've been playing around with stuff, I'm, you know, modeling it, I've got my house in the background, um, I'm actually, I'm in a 3D preview, which is why this doesn't quite look right. You know, I've modeled it out on my house, um, oh, I actually have the house hidden because, uh, it looks better that way for me. Um, so I modeled my stuff out, you know, I brought all my stuff in, whether 2D or 3D, um, now I'm ready to go ahead and start ordering this stuff. I gotta order the stuff, um, so that I can get working on it. How in the world do I figure out how many pixels, how many extensions, how many power cords, how many controllers, how do I figure out all of this stuff, right, that I could possibly need? I want to show you that today and, and show you some shortcuts, uh, some things that, some tools that x -Lights has for us that will really, 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 really help you out. Okay, um, so let's dive in. First and foremost, um, you know, before you get here, you definitely want to model things out in X Lights, you know, look around at different props from places like Boscoyo Studios and decide kind of what you want and start laying it out on your house. That's not what we're covering here, but we've got guides to, to starting with X Lights, excuse me. Uh, we've got guides to starting with X Lights that will walk you through that kind of stuff. Once you've got like a vague, you know, pretty solid estimate, you're like, okay, you know, this is kind of where I want to start. This is the stuff I want to do. It might be as much stuff as I have. It might be much less. It could be more. Um, once you're at that point, now it's time to go ahead and, and figure out what do you need in order, you know, how do you build your shopping list, right? Um, and so there's, there's two things you want to do here. Um, the first is even before, even if you haven't brought in any controllers, thought about controllers or anything like that, okay? You can go here to tools when you have all your models in here and go to export models. And I actually already did this, okay? Hit save. And then you get a spreadsheet. This is nuts, you get a spreadsheet. Let's load this up. I'm just using LibreOffice because it's a free version of Excel. Uh, and look at this you get this awesome spreadsheet that literally walks you through everything. So like, you know, there's all these start channels and universes. I'm just going to delete that stuff. Um, channels per node, estimate current, blah, 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 blah. We're deleting all that stuff. We're going to simplify it down. But look at this. You know, say we get rid of all this extra stuff that, that we don't need. Okay. So now... Let's get rid of the string count. Yeah, I think so. So now what we've got here is, okay, we've got the name of all of our models. So we can build our shopping list off this. I can go, oh, I've got two chroma bulbs hanging, two chroma bulbs standing, four chroma flake 24s. I can go over to Boscoyo Studios and, and order that stuff right now. Um, and then we've got our node count, um, which is the same as the light count in this case, so we can get rid of that. Um, and now we can go, and how do I move? I don't know how to move a column. I'll just cut and paste it. Um, and so now it's like, okay, we've got every model we want in our show. So boom, we can go to those vendors. We can order that stuff, right? Um, then we have our node counts here. So now this is as simple as easy. And I like to go and just say, okay, strings of 100, strings of 50, strings of 25. So when you're going somewhere to order all these lights, now you could just pop down this spreadsheet real quick and be like, boom, 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 boom. You know, you could, if you know, if you want to start thinking about, okay, well, I'm going to cut 30 off here and 30 off here and I can add it to that prop, go ahead and do that. Or just do a rough estimate because you'll end up ordering a few more lights than you need, which will be good to have some spares on hand if you need to fix stuff during the season, okay? Um, then I go, okay, that's string 50, that's string 50, okay. 
you know, that's, we'll call that all a string of 50. All those arches. Um, and then those are moving heads, so I'd go order those from LearnChristmasLightingStore.com. Um, floods, those aren't pixels. So I'm just, I'm just worried about, like, I mean, you could break this out and be like, bullet nodes and floods and you know other types of pixels certainly um but for simplicity's sake you know it's it's just as simple as popping in here and then here are my matrices and so they're each two strings of 100 my mega tree is 24 strings of 100 my mini trees are all 50s and then RGB trim is RGB trim, um, so that's not going to be two and two sign, is P5 panels, um, waterfall tubes, and window frames, all right. So that's like that. And so then the beauty of this is I can literally go, and if I just want to make a quick, quick shopping list, you know, hey, here's how many pixels I need, shooting a little bit high, so I got some extra, um, then I can literally just go, and I know in Google Sheets I can just highlight the column, and it'll show me the sum. Yeah, the sum is 46 right there. Or I could go in and type, you know, equals sum, right, and then go C2 through C60 in this case. And then I could drag that over to this one and this one. And now I know, okay, for this display that I've designed right here, I need... 46 boxes, strings of 100, 32 strings of 50. So now I can go to a vendor, like, you know, hey, we're the Learn Christmas Lighting Store. Um, we've got that now. And, uh, you know, we've been selling the Dominar moving heads, but we're making a move to start stocking um, a whole bunch of Matos Designs pixels as well, because we believe they're just really great pixels. Um, they're very reliable, and they're not priced more than anybody else's, um, really. So, so then you can go, okay, box of two by 50. So I would need... 16 of those boxes because there's two in a box like i can go ahead in here add those to my cart and boxes of 146 you know boom go and add those to my cart and um, we will have stock updated on there um, right now this show's sold out but at the time this video comes out we are just a couple weeks away from getting a big shipment of pixels so order yours now if you'd like some uh, and, and then we'll, we'll keep getting more throughout the season um so that's pixels what about the other stuff? Okay, pixels was definitely the easy part. So I'm just gonna close this up. I would save if you were, but I'm not saving right now. Um, so now it's like, okay, how do we figure out controllers? How do we figure out um, extensions, things like that? Well, you know, the easiest and simplest way is to start assigning your controllers. And I think I did a video late last year, we'll link it here, about assigning props to controllers with the visualizer. Um, but it's it's a really simple process in x -Lights now where you can literally just go to the controller tab, bring in a few controllers. Uh, you know, what this comes down to is basically, you know, there's like a million ways to slice the cake when it comes to controller assignments. And so you want to just look at your props, look at areas in your display where you might put controllers. How do you know where you're going to put a controller? Well, you know, in general, what we teach is we want to keep all of those pixel datas coming out of the controllers as short as possible, um, definitely under 25 feet. Okay, that's my, my recommendation. Um, it helps you have a reliable and stress-free show. Okay, um, so like I know, okay, middle of the mega tree. I've got 24 strings of 100. I'm gonna plop a controller there. Actually, I think I have a, I have it turned down, so I have 200 nodes in 12 strings. So boom, I know I need 12 strings right under that mega tree. So I put a 16 string controller right under that mega tree, right? And so start with the really dense areas, and then go. Oh, I can go from that mega tree. And I can have a string doing these arches, right? Because that's really close to the mega tree. And I can do all these arches off a string there. Okay. And then I go, oh, hey, you know, I've got a sidewalk running up the middle here. So I don't want cables crossing the sidewalk if I can avoid it. So then I go, oh, this corner. I've got stuff on the house and the, these yard trees. So what if I put a controller in this corner? You know, put it there. And then you start assigning things once you've decided what controller you want you go okay you know this is going to be an experience like say genius pro 16 or a matos dragon 8 or a falcon f48 right and you go oh here i can put these i can put 
main controllers. I can put receiver boards down and feel free to like literally screenshot and print this out, draw on it, go stand out in your yard and just think about it. Like, okay, where would it make sense? And when you are assigning controllers, especially if you're going to, if this is your first year or you know you're going to expand in the future, leave space in the controllers for that future growth, okay, for adding stuff later. So once you do that, you know, then you're going to go into the controller tab, go to a given controller and hit visualize. From over here, you can hit assign, hide models assigned to other controllers. And then when that's checked, the only models that will appear right here are ones that aren't assigned anywhere. So then you literally just find your models and, and you can adjust thankfully here at the bottom. Like you see some of these names are cutting off cause they're long. I can make the font size smaller. I can make the box size, you know, change that up. Um, and so then, you know, you go ahead basically and just start dragging this stuff over two ports you can drag them when you put them together and they overlap like that it means it'll come right after that model um, and start assigning this stuff okay once you've got you know kind of a draft you're, you hit save and you're like okay this feels good like i've got controllers all over the yard i know where i want stuff i have assigned all of my props to those controllers then simply put go to tools Export controller connections. This is so stinking good. Okay. Um, just like the model sheet. And then there's some options here. Um, so I want to just do model description. That's really all I need. Actually, I think is the, like the model name. I'm going to put the port pixel count on there. No, I don't even need that. Let's see what this spits out. I usually do more columns. <laughs> and so now, boom, these are all my controllers and you can print this and take it with you. Um, and then this shows me what is on each port. Okay. And I can have it show me the number of pixels, etc. But what this does is then, okay, this is where the rubber meets the road and you got to put shoes on, um, and pants, <laughs> I don't know, um, is okay. Now I've got this awesome, really sweet printout that walks me through everything on each of these controllers. So now grab yourself one of these, right? A tape measure, um, because it's better than estimating and go out there, right? Go out there in your yard, print this out or look at it on the phone, but I, I prefer paper, honestly, when I'm doing stuff like this in a clipboard, boom, you know, grab a pen and just write down the extension size you need. Or if you want to get fancy, add columns and add it all up and, you know, you can have math do it, whatever, but even just on the low end, just write, you know, 10 foot, you know, 15 foot, 30 foot, you know, write down and then come back and, and add up what extensions you might need. Um, I don't usually recommend going over 25 feet though. Um, and so considerations, uh, when you are figuring out extension lengths, okay. When you're looking at your layout, you're looking at a controller box and a prop. Okay. You've got to think about for total extension length. Number one, where does that controller box sit? Right? Is it on the ground? Is it mounted to like a column or the side of a house? If it's mounted somewhere, how high is it, right? Because now the wire's got to come out of that controller box. It's got to come down to the ground, perhaps, or maybe it's going up to your roof or to the top of a column. You know, what's, what's that distance, right? Measure that out. What's that distance? Then horizontally, you know, the way that the cable's going to run. So it's neat. You know, we're not talking point to point straight through the air, right? You're going to have cables looking like this. You don't want that. Um, you know, we're talking about, okay, if I go along the ground and I come down and I come around and I follow the sidewalk, you know, you know, that's, you know, you know, that's half a foot and then that's three feet and, and you can quickly add up an estimate. Of course, you always want to estimate a little bit high, uh, what that total extension length is going to be. Don't forget every prop has a different starting place for extensions, right? So like some props like these Boscoyo mini trees, I just have them punched as 180 degrees. So it's 50 nodes because of that. That means that either the start or the end is going to be at the top of that tree, which is like, you know, two and a half feet or three feet high or something like that. So that means either to get into the start or in my case at the end, going to the next prop, 
the first three feet of that extension wire is inside the existing prop, right? So I'm starting at three feet before I even go any distance on the ground. Just something to be aware of. Add up all those extensions, and then of course, come to your favorite vendor, right? Like Learn Christmas Lighting, we're stocking extensions too. And uh, we stock the flat ones from Matos Designs. And the reason why I chose to do that is after testing them, it's like, okay, it kind of annoys me that the wire doesn't feel all nice, doesn't coil as nice as a round as around extension. But here's the thing. They're smaller, they're lighter, which means they're cheaper to ship. They're the same quality gauge of wire. Um, they're just cheaper because they don't have quite as much insulation around them and they weigh less, so they ship for less, they take up less space in the shipment, etc. So, um, so, that's why we carry those. Plus, they give you a quick little piece of heat shrink to color code it, which is awesome. So, we love those. Um, and then, is that all we're supposed to talk about here? Let's find out. Woo, but don't show this to the world. This is our master plan. Um, and so that's pretty much it. You know, when you figure out all of those things and you're here in your layout, now you know, by the end of this video, how to figure out how many pixels you need and go order them. We would love to serve you at Learn Christmas Lighting Store. Um, how many extensions you need, how many uh, controllers you need, and how many ports and what type of controller that's going to be. Ultimately, um, you know, choosing a controller that's much more than just this video, but we've covered that elsewhere, as well as in the Learn Christmas Lighting Academy, which you can learn more about if you s grab our free guide. So if you're new to this, grab our free guide to begin with Christmas lighting, and we will see you guys in our next video. Thanks.